Hey everybody! Welcome to What Was Mommy Thinking? My name is Crystal and if you are new here, I am a full-time working mom of three very incredible busy boys. My husband, kids, and I live in the great state of Texas and on this channel we do lifestyle, budgeting, cooking, parenting, and all things about being a woman in today's day and age and being a mama. So if you're interested in Financial Friday, that's what we're going to do today. We are going to move my monthly cash envelope money into my weekly cash envelopes. And we're going to do something a little bit different today. I think for the first time ever on this channel, I am going to kind of strip down some of my sinking funds to pay off some debt and I thought I would take you guys along. If you're interested in that, please stick around. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already and let's get at it. I know it's a little bit too much for sure. So cold but we're always coming back for more. It goes in this wicked game it's all for sure. Oh, I've got you. All right, happy Friday, everybody. I'm so glad it's Friday. Um, we're going to do a couple of things a little bit different today. If my camera will decide to focus, not sure what's going on there. Um, but we're going to do a couple of things that are different. We're going to do our normal transfer of money from the monthly envelopes to the weekly envelopes. But the weekly check-in I'm going to hold off on for two reasons. Number one, I haven't been able to really do a weekly evaluation until Mondays anyway. So I'm trying to come up with a new way to do my weekly check-ins at the beginning of the following week. So let me know your guys' thoughts on that and kind of what format you would like to see it in. Because I, I want to have everything in there. I've done them before and I had to stop on Friday and then if we spent something on the weekend go back and add it in which doesn't really give you guys an honest reflection of what my week looked like. So let me know your thoughts on that. What we're going to start with today is we're just going to do a very simple transfer of the monthly cash envelopes to the weeklies. So for my friends that are new here, and we've had a few, um, this is my wallet, and in my wallet are my cash envelopes. If you are new to budgeting, I have a Budgeting 101 series that I started a few weeks back for a colleague of mine at work who is low income, and um, I will link that video here. Basically, cash envelopes are your money that you live on um, week to week, right? Our sinking funds are like little mini savings accounts that we're planning for those costs that have kind of whipped our tail in the past. So like for me, I would forget that my HOA dues were coming and then boom, they would hit or our pest control that's every three months and Amazon Prime and things like that that kind of would knock me out of the blue and they were real budget busters for me. So developing those sinking funds and keeping those little mini savings accounts have really, really helped. But one step further to really control my spending and to try and stay on budget are cash envelopes. So cash envelopes are those categories that you use on the regular and I will show you what mine are. Um, I do groceries, household, gas, eating out, pets, sports, and then these are the envelopes for my kiddos allowances. Now these are the monthly. Again, if you're new here, I'm sorry if I'm repeating it for some of you that are not, for all my friends. Um, I get paid once a month and out of my paycheck comes the cash envelopes for the entire month. So I was way overspending. Like I would take out, let's say that I get a thousand dollars a month for groceries. I would get to week three of the month and be like, oh gosh, I've got a hundred bucks or 150 bucks left because I would see all of that money in there at the beginning of the envelope, or I mean the beginning of the month. And I wasn't as disciplined as I should have been, so I would overspend or I would stock up on stuff and then I would have no money or little money left towards the end of the month. So what I do now is I divide it up by how many weeks in the month that there are. I take it out of the bank in those kinds of increments so that I can pull every Friday from my monthly envelopes to my weeklies. This is a Filofax Safiano wallet. 
I got mine on Amazon for $32 and change. It is my actual wallet. This is what's in my purse. I take it with me everywhere I go. This is a Happy Planner Skinny Mini. It is what holds my envelopes for the week. This is a Happy Planner Skinny Classic. It is on regular medium-sized discs. My sinking funds are on the expander discs, but this is a Happy Planner Skinny Classic. This is a Happy Planner Skinny Mini. So, I have the same envelopes, the grocery, look, I made it guys, I made a household one, um, gas, eating out, pets, I made a new one for date night, um, this was actually a, um, boo-boo envelope because I was making envelopes for a very, very sweet subscriber and I accidentally put the paper on the thing and cut it backwards so that's why the word love is upside down but um, I thought that was kind of perfect for my husband and I because we do want to start a date night fund. It is empty but it's something we want to start and then allowance, um, the weekly allowance and then sports. So all of the envelopes that you will see in my videos, all of them, I make them. I have an Etsy shop, and guys, I apologize in advance for my lack of skills with Etsy. A couple of you have ordered envelopes from me, and we've had to go in and do it differently um, because we couldn't figure out the whole Etsy thing. I'm getting help with that. So hopefully soon that'll be all worked out, but in the meantime, you can always just email me or come to one of my lives and chat with me. We will work it out and make sure you get what you're after. So, all of that being said, let's go ahead and transfer the last week of April from the monthly envelopes to the weekly envelopes. And the reason that it's the last week for me is because next Friday is the 30th, one week from today. I will get paid my monthly check. That check will fund everything from that date until the end of May when I get paid again. So this is the last transfer for April out of these envelopes into these. So in my groceries, I have the last week, and you'll see here I write week one, week two, week three, and today we will write week four. And today is the 23rd. Oh my gosh, guys, where has time gone? Oh, we're supposed to be getting some rain here in a little bit, and all I want to do is curl up on the couch with a book and a blanket or to watch a movie with my dog because my kids are all doing their school thing. But alas, I cannot because I have to work. All right, so this 50 will then go into here. Now remember, this $16 belongs to household. My grocery money, because I didn't have my household envelope made yet, my grocery money was at zero. We are going to do $4.23 and we're going to do grocery and we're going to add that $50 and have a balance of $50. Now, this $50 is going to go into my grocery envelope and then I need to move, I need to move the $16 for household into my household envelope. And I don't have, do I have an extra ledger? I don't think I have a ledger for this envelope right now, but I'm going to go ahead and put this $16 into this envelope because that's where it's supposed to live anyway. All right, so. I've got my $50 on grocery, and I'm going to need to wipe this clean soon, which is really exciting. So for now, I'm going to just go ahead and put it back in here. And by next week, we'll be starting back over at the top. So grocery is done. I can go ahead and flip this one. And then household is our next category. In our household envelope, we get $100 right now. We get $100 a month for household. It's $25 a week. And again, I go ahead and tab the $25 with the date that I should be taking it out. So let's take this off. And we will write 423. And we're going to take out that last $25 
and it gets down to the zero balance. Now, next Friday, again, because I get my once a month pay, we will be restuffing all of our monthly envelopes plus doing our transfer for um, Financial Friday. So I'm going to put this in here, and this $25 will join this $16 in my household envelope. And guys, I don't know if you guys knew about this or not, but um, the Target Weekly ad, which I don't really shop much at Target, so I didn't know, they're running a really good special about if you spend 40, you get a $10 gift card on a ton of like household products. And um, I may be using that money plus a little miscellaneous money to do that deal because I need aluminum foil and saran wrap and baggies and stuff like that. And so I may be doing that. All right, for gas, we did make a change for April because baseball has kind of been soaking up our gas money like crazy. I've been doing $30 a week, my last week for 23, a 20 and a 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this money and write 423, week four. This is where I get to have the sloppiest handwriting of my life because Nobody else sees it. So in my little gas envelope, I'm gonna pull this and I'm gonna see that I should still have 30, 20, 30, and I'm gonna add 30. And I will be using this um, this coming week. I will be needing to fill up my gas tank and it will take at least all 60 of these dollars, but I'm gonna stop at 60. We do have a baseball tournament next weekend, so I'll be driving a lot. Um, so 20, 40, 50, 60 dollars will go into my wallet for gas. I know everybody, I've heard everybody like commenting about how much gas prices have gone up and groceries have gone up and like everything has just gone up. All right, so I'm going to put my ledger back in my monthly envelope and then our next category is eating out. For eating out, right now we're doing $100 a month, but you'll see next Friday that I am going to be increasing that because with us traveling most weekends for baseball, $100 just isn't getting the job done. So for my 423 tab, I've got my $25, which is the 100 divided by four. And I'm gonna write 423, week four. And we're gonna take that last $25 out, leaving us with a balance of zero. I just, um, well not just, I have grocery pickup today. Yes, I'm a day late. For those of you that have been watching for a long time, you know that I like to order my groceries and meal plan on Wednesdays, pick them up on Thursdays, and this week it just didn't happen, guys, and that's so okay. I'm not even worried about it. So. We're gonna add that $25 back in, and that's gonna be the only thing in this envelope, so 20 and five, and we'll add it back into eating out. We spent our eat out money last weekend at the tournament, plus sports money, so it's, it's an expensive little hobby, especially when you have to get up at four something in the morning and leave the house by 5.45 to drive an hour and a half away and be there by seven, so um, next is our pets envelope. I am going to check this one out. It says here we have 150, 150, and I still have um, a little bit of money in my weekly, so let me look. I did just order dog food, so I wanna make sure that I have enough in here to cover the dog food. Okay, so I have 15, and I think that the dog food I ordered was like $13 and change after tax, so this 10 and five should cover that. Once I pick up my groceries later today, I'll be able to work all of that out and get this ready to go back in the bank. So we're just gonna hold off on pets this week. All right, again, date night is new. We haven't started funding that, but look forward to that starting probably next month, maybe maybe June at the latest. And then we have our allowance um, for my boys. We do this on Saturday. They um, have the option or the opportunity really to earn $5 a week by doing their chores every day and so we do that on Saturday with them and again my sports envelope is empty but the good news is is it gets replenished next Friday which is a wonderful thing because we have a tournament next Saturday. 
We are not going to be flipping back into my calendar and doing my weekly check-in yet because remember, um, I'm not ready. I don't have all my grocery totals or anything, so that's going to have to wait. And I'm really excited to see what you guys have to say about the format for that. Sports, um, we're not going to do anything with right now because we don't have a tournament this weekend. And then this is my kiddo's money. Um, if you're new here, I have my oldest son is RJ, my middle son is Connor, and my youngest son is Jackson. And this is his Easter money plus allowance plus some leftover, like, I don't know, Christmas, birthday, something like that. All right, so we are completely finished with transferring our money over. So I'm going to close this up. And I keep all of my cash envelopes in this Happy Planner Skinny Classic with a band on it and plenty of note pages to take notes so that all of my monthly cash envelopes are in one place. All of my weekly cash envelopes are in my wallet where I need them. And now let's talk about sinking funds. So again, if you are new here, I have not ever done a uh, debt story or debt confession video on this channel. Um, it's something that I may think about doing moving forward, but I'm going to give you guys a little glimpse today of, of what that looks like for us. This is my Happy Planner Classic Planner. It is a Franken Planner. It holds three separate planners for me. One is my Goals Planner where I track my weight loss and um, self-care and things of that nature. The second one is my Catch-All Planner where it's everything home and family. So meal planning, my uh, routines checklist, anything and everything to do with my kids, sports, school, any of that. And then my third planner is my work one because right now I am working virtually from home and I don't have my um, work calendar at home with me. So I just threw one in here and made that my work calendar for now. In my, um, for my budgeting, I keep that in here and I wanted to go through a couple of things with you guys. So here's a little bit of backstory. Um, when my husband and I first started budgeting, and I would say when we first started budgeting consistently because we had tried and stopped and tried and stopped much like me and dieting. Um, so let's just say that our financial diet was a lot of starts and stops and a lot of not knowing what we were doing and not being prepared. And as soon as that first thing hit that sort of took our feet out from under us, we just would quit or we would give up. Um, and we finally made a commitment almost a year ago, really, um, to, to buckle down and really learn how to do this right. So at the time that we started, um, a little, well, about a year ago, we had 20 credit cards. We owed two years worth of taxes for a large total, um, around 16000 two vehicle payments, and my, we both have student loans, his are minimal, mine are what most people pay for a mortgage, so, or to buy a home. So, needless to say, when we sat down and put all of that together and tried to look at it, the word overwhelming doesn't even begin to describe it. Um, defeated and uh, pessimistic and hopeless, those are some of the feelings that I think that I know I went through, disgusted, frustrated, all of those things by looking at what we had done. And I'm not saying that it was just all willy-nilly that we went running all over the state of Texas with credit cards offering to, you know, buy everything for everybody, including ourselves. It wasn't like that at all. And maybe one day I'll share the whole story, but that's where we were and we have worked hard at this and I wanted to share with you guys that as of this past week we are down to five credit cards just five and we've completely paid off of our, our tax debt all of that is gone no more monthly tax payment um, we still have both the vehicle payments, we still have all the student loans, still have our mortgage, but we're down to five credit cards. 
when I got to that point, I cried, I screamed, I texted a couple of people, um, thank you Chrissy, thank you Marlene, um, because we've never been this close before. So here's what we did, or what I did. I spent the better part of two days, almost eight hours, and um, I went through and made a list. I'm going to share that with you guys. If you've never watched one of my videos before, debt-free charts is where I get my printables. This is her um, big financial pack. I didn't color this month like I did in March. This is where I put my bills for the month. Um, this is where we track everything that we pay and then we do budget by paycheck. So I list my bills, what's left, what singing funds are coming out of it, and then I keep a page in my planner for cash in the bank. Some of you guys have brains that can keep track of this. I do not. So if there's cash in my bank but it's committed to somebody, so it's in a relationship with something, then I write that commitment down. And if we spend something that's got to go that went on a credit card that cash has to be in the bank when that is used and the only thing that we really use that for is the sports and if the boys want to give us cash to do something on their online gaming or whatever and we'll we don't use our debit card online for stuff like that so what you see here is like um, membership my son Connor bought something and gave us the cash for it. Um, he had some baseball lessons. And then our business is JTS, Just In Time Sports. And we had a um, annual renewal that went on. So all of this cash for all of these items is sitting in our bank. It will get paid on April the 26th. But I need a list so that when I go to balance my bank account, I know what cash is already committed and in a relationship and who it's in a relationship with so that when I do do it, I can highlight it. So when we paid my son's baseball dues of $300, we highlighted it. When I paid off my Amazon store card, I highlighted it. So those things are gone and I now only have to look at the things that aren't highlighted. I keep one of these and run this tally all month long. So I haven't been as doing as good a job with my spending tracker as I should and it definitely shows when I go to balance and do my things at the end of the week, this is where I am struggling the most and where I need to work on the most. The paycheck that we're currently in is this paycheck here. It is the April the 16th paycheck. The bills, if I have a little dot next to them, that means that they're auto draft out of my account. I don't need to physically pay them. The ones that needed to be paid that I have to actually go in and pay, I do that as soon as that paycheck hits the bank. So all of those things are paid. If there was a difference, I write it here in this column, and this is one of my favorite columns. And then my notes. I love having a notes section. So our car insurance for some reason was a little less, our electricity bill was less, and then I turned around and took that money and deposited into our home project sinking fund. So that's how we do it. Um, if you wanna see any of our um, budget pay by paycheck things and what we do with our sinking funds, I can link the playlist above, but that is what we do. Here's what I spent all of that time doing. I just took a blank piece of paper, um, this is just Happy Planner note paper, and I drew some columns on it and I went through and I listed every single sinking fund that we have. Now remember, it's sinking funds only because these are mini savings account. We do not take money out of the cash envelopes. That is completely separate. I don't even look at sinking funds and cash envelopes as in the same realm weekly and cash envelope money that is your living money that is what you use every day day to day week to week to to keep everything going and you know put food on the table take care of everything that's what that is these are little miniature savings accounts so what i did is i went through let me see if i can use a little folder here 
I went through, I listed all of the funds. That's why it says the name of the fund up here. Then I went through and I took and I put a little X next to every fund that no matter what is not allowed to be touched. Things like our pest control, our HOA, those automatically come out every three months. I have them set up on auto draft out of our bank account. So I can't take a single penny out there out of there because they are budgeted to the penny. So I did the X's on the ones that were not allowed to be touched. We're not touching Mother's Day because Mother's Day is next month. And I don't want to take money out of there because I don't have time to refund this sinking fund before Mother's Day hits. So that brings me to the next column. I put what our balance currently was in all of these sinking funds and then for any sinking fund that was getting funded on next Friday's paycheck which is April the 30th that's why it says um, 430 ish any fund that's getting funded on April the 30th I went ahead and included that amount in this column so next Friday this would be the total in each of these funds and then down at the bottom is the grand total. Now, not all of these funds are in an envelope. There's a few of these in the bank, but my sinking funds total between what I have in cash and what I have in the bank was $6,501. That's a lot of money, y'all. For me, I was shocked by this number. Like, it blew my mind. So then I said, okay, well, I've got this credit card debt and I've got this cash. Is there any way that I could kill two birds with one stone? And here's what I mean by that. Are there any sinking funds that if I took money out of them today or next Friday, let's say, let's use next Friday. Are there any sinking funds that if I take money out of it next Friday that I could put that money back in before I need to use it? So let's use Christmas as an example because it is my largest sinking fund. It is supposed to have, that's not a correct total either because I bought a couple of Christmas presents. So it is supposed to have $1,460 in the sinking fund. What I will tell you is that's a lot of money for us. What I had to look at was what is my goal for this sinking fund? And my Christmas sinking fund is all-inclusive. That's decor. That's Christmas dinner. That's Christmas travel. That is gifts. That is um, the calendars that we send to everybody. Like, it is everything in one fund. That's my Black Friday shopping, everything. When I started this sinking fund in January, I had a huge optimistic goal of reaching... $4,000. My minimum needed was $2,500 and my goal was $4,000. So I did this for every fund that I felt like I could I could um, borrow from and that's really what it is is borrowing. So if $25 is my minimum and $4,000 is my goal, what what I have to do, like I would, I looked at it and went, okay, Christmas. Christmas is in December. I need the money in November. So May, June, July, August, September, October, November. And then I threw in December because realistically I do have most of the month of December and I get paid early in December anyway. So I have eight months to make up any money that I take out of this account and still meet my goal. So eight months to make $4,000 means I need to be putting $500 a month in there. Well, I was already putting three thirty, so that's a difference of hundred and seventy a month. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So what I did is I went through and I did that with all of these funds that you see the writing with. So if I borrowed from Amazon Prime, I needed in January, I'd have to start putting fifteen a month in, but I can only pull sixty bucks from it. So I decided to leave it alone. Back to school. I decided not to pull any money from it to stay at $100 for now and then decrease the next few payments so that when August, which is just a couple months away, rolls around, I'm going to have um, $1,000, I believe, to go do all the back-to-school stuff. The $1,200, I'm not going to make that this year. We'll hit it next year, maybe. So you kind of get the point. I went through each of these funds and decided which ones 
that I was able to borrow from, but then increase my contribution in those categories starting in May so that I was still on track to meet my goal when I needed the fund. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope that makes sense. So the funds that I decided that I am going to borrow from, Family Pictures, which has $220 in it right now, my goal is to have $500. So that means May, June, July, August, and September have to have $100 a piece. Well, I haven't been putting $100 a piece, $100 in there. So was that something that I can do? And I'll show you guys how I figured that out here in a minute. Christmas, we already talked about birthdays. So birthdays on the 30th, I will be putting another $100 and they will have 200. Right now there's one and then I'll put another 100 in on next Friday. So $200, when is our next birthday? Well, the next birthday in this family is in August. So May, June, July, August. I have four months to save up for birthdays and what would I make that monthly amount be? Well, it would need to be 150. The other one that I looked at was a vacation. So at this time, vacation has $800 in it, and I put $200 a month into vacation. We are planning to take the trip back home to Florida for Christmas that we weren't able to take this past Christmas. We're planning to take the trip this Christmas for 2021 that we weren't able to take in 2020 because of COVID and other things. So if I take money out of here, then I have to increase it to a $250 contribution to get to the amount that we had set as a goal by December. So now that I've explained all of that and how I figured all of that out, let me show you how that played out. I have a Happy Planner Big notebook and that's all this is is just note pages right and this is where I plan my I need to move some of these things so you guys can see this is where I plan my my paycheck amounts um, whether you use a notepad or, or whatever it is you use this is what I use um, I've had this for quite some I got this I don't know seven eight months ago I love these stick figures. They are my absolute favorite. If you've watched any of my um, hauls or my planner things, these little stick figures, hands down my favorite. So this is just a sticker pad with some stickers on it. And then under the first tab is where I go through. And this page, I do one page per month. This is the page for May. We're getting ready to go into May. It's time to plan those budgets and look at that. So across the top, I'll write the three paydays that we get. Mine is always the last work day of the month. My husband typically has two. Twice a year, we get that extra third paycheck. So this year it's April. So April the 30th is one of the unicorn months for us. He'll get a third check for the month and then in October. So what I do is I went through and I put all the bills that had to come out of that paycheck just like you would on a budget mom worksheet, took the amount that was left over from that paycheck and decided what sinking funds I could stuff with that amount. So my sinking funds change from paycheck to paycheck every two weeks. I fund what I can, when I can, with as much as I can. And I went in and I plugged in with my erasable pens those new numbers. So 250 for vacation. Um, I couldn't do the full 500 for Christmas, so I decided to take less out of the Christmas sinking fund. I'm going to leave $170 in the Christmas sinking fund so that there is a $500 balance at the end of May, if that makes sense. So family pictures is 100 and um, birthdays. I don't see birthdays on here, so it must be over here. Yes, birthdays, 150 and I think that was it. Vacation, birthdays, Christmas, family pictures. Right. So I plugged in the new numbers of what I would need. And then I said, okay, I can do it in May, but can I do it in June? And I went through and I did the exact same thing for June. Now, bills are paid, my monthly check, all of the cash envelopes come out of my check. So that's what you see here. And that's what you see here. There are no... Um, real sinking funds out of my paycheck. We just, we pay the mortgage and then we 
um, stuff our cash envelopes. These are our sinking funds. These are our sinking funds. So I had to keep up with the new numbers and make sure that um, I'm doing 500 for Christmas starting in June, 300 for vacation because that's the new number, and I couldn't do 300 in May, so I have to leave $50 in that sinking fund when I take money out. And I will explain all of that as we do it. But So I mapped out May, I mapped out June, and that gave me 60 days worth of information to look at and to go, you know what, this is doable. So now I'm going to take money out of these sinking funds, you guys. I'm going to take money out of those four sinking funds and put it with one electronic sinking fund that we have and we're going to pay off the largest credit card debt that we have left in one big swoop. So I am ecstatic and here's what I need to say to you guys. There's no way and when I say no way I mean like no way. I would have ever been able to do this if it weren't for this community and for you guys um, being a part of our journey and keeping me with faith when I was starting to lose faith and all of those things. Um, I have wanted to quit a hundred times in the last four or five months and you guys keep me from doing that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And while we're talking about that, I want to give a shout out to another YouTube channel that's in this community. Um, so many of you came over when Chrissy gave a shout out to me. So I'm doing the pay it forward and I'm going to shout out Kat Ritz, C-K-A-T-R-I-T-Z. I'm going to link her channel below. I'm going to link her latest video below and I'm going to tell you as quickly as I can why you need to go check her out and um, watch her videos. Kat is one of the most down-to-earth, kind, humble, grateful, and gracious people I think I have seen on YouTube. She is honest. She is realistic. She is open. And, I mean, just being a part of her videos and her being a part of the community that she's in. Her and her husband just bought their first home. And... Guys, if you haven't watched her budget videos, she is killing it. We have watched her just blossom over the last several months, and she is doing a phenomenal job with her financial goals and her budgeting, and I will link her channel below. Please go over, and when you do, please tell her that Crystal from What Was Mommy Thinking sent you over there to check her out and share the love because she deserves all of it. So... That being said, we're going to flip right back here to my budget section, and I'm going to show you guys um, my sinking funds. So, when I keep track of my sinking funds, and again, debt-free charts, big financial pack, I wrote them in alphabetical order because I'm a Sheldon like that, and I have four and a half pages of them. So I just started this in March, and I keep track of the balances, right? So April is still written in pencil. Next Friday, I will go through and update them and write them in ink, just like I did for March. I put a little box around the month that I'm going to need the, to use the sinking fund, and I keep track of things this way. You and I are going to go through, we're going to pull cash out of four sinking funds, and this car lease payoff sinking fund is a digital one. It's in my bank. That one's going to be brought down to zero because I will increase. We, we looked at what would we have to increase this monthly amount to if we pulled the April payment and just started in May, and it was $30, y'all. So for $30, I'm going to use this $835. Bucks. So... I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to pull those four sinking funds together. Again, if you are new, this is a Happy Planner Classic purse. It comes in like a khaki color and a black color. This is where my sinking funds live. Remember I explained to you that I need all of my stuff in one place, like all of my cash envelopes are in that one binder. This is another binder. It is a skinny classic just like the one that my cash envelopes are in however let me pull it right out of here it is on expander discs now 
What that means is that it's stuffed, right? These are all of the envelopes for all of the sinking funds. Um, a couple of things that I absolutely love about this system is number one, everything's in one place. I never have to look for anything and I love making the envelopes and making them fit my personality. When I open it, it lays flat. Like I don't have to fight anything to get envelopes to, you know, I, I don't want to wrestle with anything. So that is this system and here's what we're going to do. I'm going to flip the cover over and we're going to take the very first one, which is birthdays. And right now it has $100 in it, or it should. Let's check and see. Yes, so right now it has $100 in it, $50,100. And then on the 30th, you can see here it was funded on April or March 31st. On April 30th, when I get paid, it was it's budgeted to get an extra $100. We're going to use both of those hundreds. We're going to take those $200 and we're going to put it in the bank so that we can put it towards debt. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write today's date, which is, oops, 3-23. Oh gosh, 4-23. I don't know what I'm doing, y'all. I'm going to take the $100 out and that's going to leave this fund with nothing. That makes me a little nervous, but because I put so much time and intention in planning this out, it doesn't make me too nervous. What I do know is if I, I'm trying to cover that up, down here under birthdays, instead of $100, I've already put that it's not getting anything. There will be $0. So that's what we needed to do. So when I go back to my sinking funds, I'm going to here, I didn't bring a pencil. Hang on guys, let me grab a pencil. All right, so sorry about that. So, under birthdays, I'm going to put that the final balance is going to be zero. And I'm gonna draw a little whatever that was. Haha, <laughs> it was supposed to be a star, but it really didn't go well, did it? I'm going to put the little asterisk there because I know that when I go to close out at the end of the month, I will remember the funds that I pulled from. Christmas is another one. So we're going to go into our Christmas envelope next. <clears throat> it is my last envelope in here. It is also the fullest envelope in here. All right. In Christmas... I should have fourteen hundred and sixty dollars. Fourteen sixty. One, two, three, four, five, six, twenty, twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, seven, twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, eight, twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, nine, twenty, forty, sixty. 80, 1,000, 20, 40, 60, 80, 11, 20, 40, 60, 80, 12, 20, 40, 60, 80, 13, 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 14, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Now, remember, in May, I can't afford to make that $500 payment. All I was going to be able to afford to do was to leave it at the 330 so I need to leave $170 in this sinking fund. So I'm going to do a 100, a 50, and a 20, and we're going to take the rest of that out. So 150, 170, and down here, I'm going to need my little calculator. I'm going to take 1460 and subtract 170. So I'm going to take out 1200 Oops, 1290 dollars and that's going to leave me with 170. And again, very very nervous, especially about Christmas cuz now you're talking about my kiddos and stuff. Um but I've looked at it, I've mapped it, I've planned it. I have to put $500 a month in here. I couldn't afford to do that in May because most of my budget was already accounted for. So I have to leave $170 so that when I put May's $330 payment with it, 
it will equal that $500 I need for May to keep me on track so that in December when I need this money, I will have the right amount. I hope all of that makes sense to you guys. Sometimes my brain does things that don't make sense to anybody else, and gosh, half the time they don't even make sense to me. All right, so Christmas is done. Birthday is done. We're going to do family pictures, which is this super pretty envelope right here. And again, remember, just like Christmas, I don't have enough money to make the payment that I need for March, so I have to leave $40 in here. It says I should have 220 so that's 1, 20, 40, 60, 82, 10, 15, 20. I have to leave $40 in here. So I'm going to leave those two, which means I'm taking 1, 20, 40, 60, 70, 75, 80. So I'm taking $180 out. We hope to get family pictures done sometime around um, mid-October. So I'm going to take out $180 and we're going to have $40 left. So that $20.40 will go right back in here. All right, so family pictures is done. Next is vacation, which may be, yep, it is. It's up here. I love these, like, um, what do they call those? I don't mean, I, I, I don't know. There's a word for that. I don't know what it's called. All right, so this says I should have 800. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, because I can't afford to make the full $300 payment in May, I can only take $450, I'm sorry, $750 of this. I have to leave $50 because all I can afford in May is a $250 payment. So I'm going to come over here and grab a $50 and put all of this over here to go to the bank. So I'm going to take that $50 and put it back in my vacation fund. And then you and I are going to add up the amount that I have pulled from my sinking funds to go towards my Chase credit card. And that's what it is. It is my Chase credit card. It is my official last credit card. My husband still has two very small ones. One's getting paid off next Friday. The other one will get paid off um, no later than mid-May. And then we have one business card that's um, that's got to be done. But other than that... Um, this is crazy to me. I can't even believe this is happening. So, let me put a little asterisk beside family pictures. And then let me put another one over here on vacation. And go ahead and take those balances down. So, when I close out the month, if I started with $600 and I'm ending with $50, that means that there was a difference of $550, even though I had added $200 on one paycheck and now taken out $750. The exchange between the two would be a total of $50. Over here on Family Pictures, we're going to go ahead and erase all of this. And because I left $40 in there, the difference between $40 and $195 is $155, leaving it a balance of 40 and Christmas sweet Moses in the morning. Oh, I'm still a little like, ooh, about this one. This one's this one hits me in all the feels. Um, I am leaving a balance of $170, and the difference between $1,190 and 170 means I took out on the balance of the account 1020. Now we both know that that's more. On the car lease, oh, again, we both have vehicles that are leases, and when the leases are up, we want to have enough money in the savings account to pay them both off. Mine's up in 2023, his is up in 2024, and we're going to go into May with a zero balance in that fund. So let's start with that $835 since it is in the bank. 
In addition to that $835, I have a $200 debt snowball payment from last paycheck that we're going to go ahead and add. So we are starting with $1,035. That is before any of this. And now we're going to count this up and add it to it. Let me move this stuff out of the way and get rid of all of my eraser shreds that I just made a mess with so that you guys can see the calculator and we can do this. So 50. Oh, hang on, 835 plus 200, right? Okay, 1035. Then add a 50, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 900. Me and this calculator, 835 plus 50 plus 200 plus 900 is 1985. Okay, 20, 40, 60. Oh, let's move on down. Plus 10, plus 5, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4. Add 4 more hundred. Add another 50. 20, oof, these are sticky. 20, 40. 60, 81, 20, 40, 60, 82, 20, 40, 60, 80, <laughs> 3, 20, 40, 60, 84, 20, 40, 60, 85, 20, 40, 60, 86, 20, 40, 60, 87, 20, 40, so 740 dollars. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So, plus 30. 3,355 dollars, you guys. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, so between this money and the money that we're going to be able to keep from that extra third paycheck at the end of the month, which is $1,400. That gives us $4,755 next Friday at the end of the month that is liquid, tangible, ready to go to credit card payments. I will tell you that I owe $3,905 on my Chase and that my husband's Amazon card is $648. That still leaves us with $200 to then apply to that third card that will go with some money that um, will come out of the next couple of paychecks. That's the one that we hope to have paid off by mid-May. So with that being said, you guys, there is absolutely no word that can describe how amazing this feels. And I can tell you that old Crystal, well, I am old Crystal, former Crystal, if this money were sitting in a savings account in the bank, it would be gone. And I don't care how many bank accounts I have, I know where they all are it would have been spent. I would have found a reason to spend it because it's cash. It's harder for me to spend. I don't want to spend it. I feel amazing being able to go put this in the bank and then make one huge big payment and completely pay off my last individual credit card. So thank you guys so much for sharing this with me and sticking through this with me while I processed all of it and figured it out and pulled the money and have a plan on how to put it back before I'm going to need it because otherwise it would have just been sitting there and I would have still been paying interest on my credit card. So we're going to use it and we're going to replace it and we're going to head towards being credit card debt free. Take care, everybody. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I hope that you are surrounded by sunshine and love and all of the people in your life that matter to you. I will see you in the next video. Please don't forget to go check out Cat Ritz. I'll leave everything in the description box and in a comment below. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.